Welcome back to Rise and Shine. On this day, this is the, gosh, I got lost in that, uh, it's Wednesday the 16th. I guess I should keep track of my dates, but that's what today is, and I'm glad to be here with you. That was a very interesting discussion. People working very hard, people that feel very strongly, that actually do not take it casually, and I'm glad that they are there and working through it. They've got our best interests at heart. Um, it's a very appropriate thing to move over to another area uh, in our community that uh, has our best interests at heart, and their leader is with us today. And of course, I'm speaking of Carillion, I'm speaking of the hospital, I'm speaking of doctors, I'm speaking of good health and wonderful people. And uh, Bill is, Jacobson, of course, is here. And um, I had reason to, D and I, to be up in the hospital. And I, I sought you out and just said, you know, something equal to that's the way it has to be done. It was done perfectly. And I Thank you, thanked you for that. And I stand on that. And uh, it's, boy, my, my goodness, how do, we, how do we continue to be able to do that? And um, you've told me uh, one, two, three, four words, closing the coverage gap. That's correct. All right, let's, let's define that if we can, and then let's talk a little bit where, about where Carillion is. Wow, that's a hard one to define. Um, let, me, let me explain something, Dick, and, and you and your audience will be able to run my hospital when we're done with this. How's that? Wow. Does that work? Yeah. Steve, I get, okay. a, I get a raise if I go to the hospital. That's work. right. That's <laughs> okay. right. Okay. All right. Um, let me explain how hospitals get paid, and actually most physicians too, but the hospitals more specifically. Uh, we have four basic sources of payment, okay? One source is commercial insurance, which most people mm -hmm. know about, because if you're employed and you're, and you're lucky enough to have your employer cover you, um, they, they cover you pretty well, generally. Mm -hmm. um, then we have Medicare, which I believe, Mr. Shoemaker, you're a recipient of Medicare. Oh, one might think so. Yes, yes. Medicare <laughs> is for our... For a long time. <laughs> that's Go right. Ahead. Medicare is for our, for our citizens that are 65 or older, and uh, it's governmental insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have another governmental insurance called Medicaid. And Medicaid in the state of Virginia, it's a little different in each state. And in Medicaid in Virginia is you not only have to be very, very poor, but you also have to be disabled, which in many states that's not the case. Now children in Virginia are covered, the poor children, it doesn't matter whether they have a dis disability or not. But but if you're an adult, you not only have to be poor, but you have to be clinically disabled. Okay? And then the fourth payment source are those people who have no insurance. And uh, for those, we, we call those self-pay. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of joke, I call it no pay because essentially we collect about 2% of those bills. Okay? So we have four payer sources. Three of those payer sources do not pay us our cost. And that's Medicare, Medicaid, and self-pay. Okay, so when the government comes in and says we're going to cut one of our governmental programs, what do you think I do to keep the hospital afloat? You gotta run your prices up somehow. Right, I shift it to the oh, private insurers. Private ones. And right now, what that results in is just uh, an unsustainable situation where businesses, mm -hmm. their costs go up, including my own. I have 240 employees at Franklin Memorial or 260 employees at Franklin Memorial, and my insurance costs go up as well. So I'm an employer as well and a business person. So um, we have a problem nationally. Um, we've been doing this for a while and we've been getting away with it and it's, it's not sustainable. So uh, several years ago, uh, President Obama came in and decided that he was gonna do something. I'm not sure he did the right thing, but he was gonna do something and he passed something called the Affordable Care Act, which a lot of people around here call Obamacare. And when he passed that, his notion was to, uh, imp to get people that are in that coverage gap, the uninsured folks, get them covered so they would have access to care. Uh, he did that by creating, an, creating the Affordable Care Act. And the notion was that hospitals would take cuts in Medicare 
Mm -hmm. Those monies we get to take care of our elderly. We would take cuts in Medicare because we would alternatively expand coverage to those that didn't pay. Okay, and as Peter a, to pay Paul, pretty much. Okay, and and our uh, it's very simplistic yeah. view of it, but that's essentially what's happening. So, so what happened was um, the hospital industry. We went along with that and said, okay, we can handle that because we do want to get our uninsured insured. Mm -hmm. We want them to have access mm -hmm. to care and stop using the most expensive care there is, which is our emergency room. And um, uh, so we went along with that. And we started that in 2010. And so far, we've had almost a million dollars in cuts uh, to this date uh, at, uh, at Franklin Memorial. And we've absorbed those cuts and done the best we can with them. But the way the Affordable Care Act is, as more people are covered, mm -hmm. the cuts get deeper. And unfortunately, uh, the Supreme Court, um, fortunately or unfortunately, the Supreme Court ruled that you could not coerce states into expanding Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and our state is elected not to do that at this point, and so we're cut in between. You've explained that in a way that is very clearly understood. <laughs> Um, well, I'm not too bright, so if I can explain I, it, I, if I understand yeah, it, most people should I be think I to. fit that category because yeah. now I understand. Um, yeah, I, I, of course, you know, I've, I've been retired for a while and um, used to run a bank mm -hmm. and would periodically hit that same, and on one hand, somebody's going to pay more interest, mm -hmm. but then they're going to say, no, I'm not. Right. I'm going to do without. Right. So then the business drops. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can relate it to the financial industry. <laughs> the only difference is a monstrous difference, and right. that is the health and well-being of people. Right. That is the thing that sets it apart completely right. from anybody else's problems. That's right. Because you're asked to make sure that everybody is well. And uh, no, I'm legislated to make sure that everybody is well. And, and you're legislated, yes, yes, that's true. And as a community hospital, that's what I want. And which, which gets back to Bill. Right. Yeah, right, and, and all the staff. And you're doing it magnificently. Thank you. In spite of, and I hate to say it like that, but that, that's where the rubber meets the road. All right, now, that's a very good explanation. Mm-hmm. Um, what do we do next? <laughs> well, Which of these four uh, uh, can you adjust up or down to fill some of that void? Well, uh, that's what I'm, I'm talking about now. What the, what, uh, the state has been laboring with this, and um, I saw that Rick Huff was here earlier, and, and uh, Mr. Kamishu, who's actually my, my supervisor, um, you know, I... My heart goes out to these folks in government, um, our delegates, our senators. They're caught in a really tough situation. Uh, state funds are limited. And uh, a lot of what we talked about last night as far as the county budget and, and education and <clears throat> other things are a direct result of the state not having enough money to fund things. And um, it, it's, it's a very tough situation. But the, the Affordable Care Act, which was passed went into effect in 2010, is gaining strength, um, is affecting us significantly. And um, for us, um, next year I will look at, an, an, just in that year, not 2010 to 2014, but just in 2015, that means another million dollars in cuts for me. And then a million to the following year, and it just keeps on getting higher and higher. Um, without any relief on the other side to cover the folks in that coverage gap. And so um, we've taken that to the state and mm -hmm. as a healthcare community. And uh, we uh, had a, a number of Republicans in the Senate, um, uh, led by Senator Watkins from Chesterfield County, and who I used to be on my board when I was chief operating officer at Johnston Willis Hospital in Richmond. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful man. And, uh, but Senator Watkins and his colleagues came up with a solution, and it was to create uh, something called Marketplace Virginia, which would be a uh, privatized uh, 
exchange for people to buy insurance uh, in, from, a, from private insurers to close that coverage gap. So if you couldn't get it qualified for Medicaid and you couldn't get into the marketplace subsidies that the federal government has, we'd take care of that gap, and that's 400,000 Virginians. Wow. Okay? And in here it's even more pronounced because 17% of our population here is uninsured. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty striking since only since we only have a what, I think it was five point seven percent unemployment mm -hmm. rate. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty striking. So what that tells you is a lot of our employers are either curtailing their mm -hmm. insurance and mm -hmm. sending people That's to it. the exchanges or or you know, not covering them. So what we're trying to do is to get that coverage gap. Now, what does that mean to us financially? Okay, um, for Carilion Clinic, um, Carilion Clinic's a nonprofit organization, and we use the profits that we make to build new facilities, buy equipment, you know, that capital expenditures that we have. Um, to keep our bond rating to be able to get that, um, your, your banker, to get that lending, um, we have an A-plus bond rating. And to, to keep that bond rating, we have to keep a 3% operating margin, which means mm -hmm. we have to keep 3%, a 3% profit margin, mm -hmm. which isn't much. No. Right now we're about 1.5% and it's getting worse every day because we don't we're feeling the effects of both the affordable care act sequestration other mm -hmm. federal cuts that are coming through and so for Carilion clinic next year that's a 31 million dollar cut that's our entire operating margin mm -hmm. going away the following year it'll be a 34 million dollar hit to Carilion clinic statewide it's a half a billion dollars to Virginia hospitals next year in cuts. And um, it's not sustainable. How do you... And so, so for me, politically, um, you know, people talk about being on different sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm in the aisle. I, 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 don't have, <laughs> I don't have a political <laughs> leading either way. I just want to serve my community. And we've been put into a very difficult position. And so have our state legislatures. legislators. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult position because we can't do anything about the federal law, it's law. But at the state level, we've got to make a decision. Do we take this federal money? What we're losing right now is $5 million a day, $6.2 billion over the next four years of federal money that's been allocated for Virginia to expand coverage, and we're just leaving it there. Hmm. Now. That not only has an effect on people, we, people here as far as health care, but we're the largest private employer in, in Franklin County. Uh, we have 1,046 Carilion Clinic employees that live in Franklin County with a $53 million payroll. That's 13% of the total payroll of the county is Carilion Clinic employees that are very well-paid jobs, mm -hmm. very well-paid jobs. Those jobs are going to go away. Uh, we cannot absorb a $31 million cut and not curtail services. So you're trying to cover the same or more with less. That's correct. Way less. Way less. Way less. I mean, this is unprecedented. Does this result in a refusal to uh, uh, care? Somebody has yeah. a need and you're going to have to say, and, and I'm not I'm not suggesting this. I'm just saying that you would have to say you'll have to wait or possibly possibly we're not able to get to you. We're working our best to try to make it as efficient as possible. Okay. We have to take by law, we have to take anyone who shows up in our, our emergency room I, as that, a community I'm, hospital. I'm, I'm weighing that, you know, as a So we we have to do that work. Um there are other services in the community that'll probably be curtailed um if not eliminated. Um, because uh, we cannot in incur that kind of cut. Um, now, um, what they're struggling with at the governmental level is we have a Senate plan. The governor has his own plan. Um, both plans have been, uh, uh, require waivers from the federal government. Um, we've been told by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services that they would grant mm -hmm. us those waivers, so we're not locked into it. A lot of people have said, well, you know, if we provide this this mm -hmm. coverage and the government runs out of money, what happens then? We disenroll. Um, people in Medicaid, I don't know how familiar you are with Medicaid, but people in Medicaid, we enroll them and disenroll them every day. Because mm. if they make above the, if they make mm -hmm. above the mm -hmm. amount, we have okay. to disenroll them. So that's nothing new. 
Um, but this would help us give them access to care. And there's studies in Oregon, in New York, in Arizona where they've done this already, where we're seeing very positive health outcomes. Mm -hmm. We're fi finding help for people with depression. We're finding people getting their diabetes under control. We're finding these folks, we're actually reducing the cost and the train wrecks that happen at the end with unmanaged health by giving them access to this care. And what we're coming up with here, the Senate has come up with a unique Virginia solution, a privatized solution, and we need to move forward. But we, um, we're not because we have folks that have just said no and they haven't come up with an alternative. Now they've come up with some things about reforming, which is a good thing, we need to reform. These are government elected folks? Yeah, right, right now the House of Delegates is in, not Delegates. in favor of, of um, closing the coverage gap and um, they want to go through, they have a, uh, what's called a Merck committee mm -hmm. um, that is um, looking at reforms and they're, they've finished phase one, they're in phase two and three. A lot of these reforms have been put mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why we can't take advantage of this federal money, that's our money, sitting up there uh, while we do the reforms. Is there a logical offset? Is there a logical response it says, no, we shouldn't, this is why? Or does it just automatically mean less care? It automatically means less care. But, so, you know. But, but, but the, the uh, you know, I understand where a lot of the folks are coming from. You know, we have a very high national debt. Everybody's concerned about that. Uh, they're worried about the government running out of money. Uh, While well, the money's been appropriated for the next six years uh, with, with the federal government, um, a lot of people want to send a message that we don't like Obamacare. I don't really like it that much either. It was expansion without reform. Mm -hmm. We're trying to reform it. Mm -hmm. We're working, and that has to be done locally. But we have to survive long enough to make it local. Yeah. And this kind of cut will just be, if, if we're providing services, we'll, we'll be on a wing and a prayer. Um, because we can't, we can't sustain that kind of cut. And we won't be get able to get access to capital to expand services and, and work with services in the community. So it's a very serious problem. And, um, you know, uh, with it, because we have so much uncompensated care here in Franklin County, because we have so many uninsured, um, I will actually benefit. Where a lot of hospitals will either break, break even or just have a slight loss, I'll actually benefit from it. So we'll be able to, to do more and expand services here, which is what I've been wanting to do. You know, where I, I spent time on Saturday on a health walk. Gail Nordhaus and I mm -hmm. um, met about 20 people up at Booker T, and we're doing that every month. And, and it's not just a walk. It's time to sit down with folks and talk mm -hmm. to them about mm -hmm. what, what's ailing them, what are things that, that they need to do to improve their own health. It was so beneficial to kind of talk to them and see where they want to go as a community. And that's where I want to be. I want to send my resources in where I can take care of health as opposed to managing sickness. Mm. We call it health care, but really it's sickness management. The, I haven't heard that, that particular reference before, but that, that, that's, I, I, I right. can relate to that, yeah. And we're slowly getting there, you know. This is a very complex problem, and it's not gonna be, there's no quick, mm -hmm. quick fix. Um, mm. I applaud President Obama for doing something. Was it the right thing? Probably not. We're tweaking it, yes. It's not gonna be perfect. But we have to work on it all together, and we have to work at in the middle of the aisle, <laughs> where you know I'm not on either side, and I think there's a lot of us that we remember the old Seinfeld show. I love that show, and and they they talked about Festivus for the rest of us. Yes. Yeah. We got to talk about the rest of us. I'm I'm tired of talking about the right and the left. Let's talk about the rest of us, and let's get this done. Hmm. And when you're speaking of it from the standpoint of what you do, you're mm -hmm. talking about our, it's life or death, it's our good health, mm -hmm. and it's necessary. If there's ever an area that's necessary, that's it. Right. Hmm. Right. An eye-opener. It is an eye-opener. Um, we need to stay up on this. We need to be aware of it, and people need to be alert to it. Mm-hmm. Who do you call, who does somebody call and deal with? I hate to say this because they're so barraged now, but our our our, our representatives, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. particularly on the House of Delegates, um, uh, if you're in the northern part of the county, 
Yeah. Uh, Delegate Byron, southern part of the county, Delegate Poindexter, they're awesome delegates. They represent us well. Mm -hmm. um, they are opposed to this, and they have their reasons. And um, But uh, I'm caught in the middle, and, and it's a tough place to be, a very tough place to be. I hope people are paying attention, and I'm sure they are. We have a good audience and good folks that are right down the middle of what's going on in Franklin County. <clears throat> Excuse me, and to hear this and to understand it, you've stated the case, if I can use that term, very eloquently. Uh, we need to follow on this. I'd love to. You know, it, it will. We need to have a decision, as as um, uh -huh. uh, Rick Huff and and uh, Supervisor Commissioner were saying that earlier. Um, this is holding up our entire state budget. Yeah. And um, is that a good thing? I don't know. I think it is because we're talking about thousands of jobs right. uh, in healthcare. We're talking about care for our communities. We're talking about um, caring for the people that are costing all of us money. Because when they come to the emergency room, the highest cost of care there is, I just move that cost over to private insurers, which mm -hmm. puts people out of jobs. It's a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And we've got to break that cycle. Yep. And we've got to manage care. Uh, we need to follow up on this. Okay. We will. If, if I can sit with you, I think you've explained it perfectly. Thank you. And uh, uh, what can we call it? An eye-opener? Eye-opener and something that requires action. Yep. Um, you know, I, I'd hate to see um, what we've built here as far as the healthcare community um, be damaged by this. And, yeah. and I don't want to see that. I don't want to see people have to go elsewhere to find work um, in healthcare. Uh, again, we, we have uh, some of the best um, jobs in the county because we require them to have education. Yep. You know? I think you're absolutely right. So we're going to carry forward with this. And uh, I'd like to sit with you again sure. once we've had an opportunity to let the government do its thing, yep. whatever that might be. And then what's the outcome? You know, that kind of a, that kind of a now let's take a look at it. Did anybody listen? Are we any closer? Uh, or are we still relying on that top end insurance to cover the multitude of what we they have can't. to do. And, and it's impossible. Longer. They it's can't impossible. any longer. And, and, and of course, as, as I'm retired, and my, my costs keep going up. Right. So, uh, and as a Medicare recipient with our cuts from Medicare, mm -hmm. there's only going to be limited services that we can do. It's quite amazing. Quite amazing. I appreciate you stepping up, and I appreciate what the, co the hospital does. Thank you, You Dick. know, uh, I am... A fan. Thank you. Is that an appropriate way to put it? And I'm Thank on you. your side. And I think that it's necessary that we continue. Um, I hope you understand, folks. It's, it's not a complaint. It's, it's a fact. And it needs to be. There is a way. But we need to take that step. And no, uh, you said it earlier. We just can't say no. We've That's got to right. come up with a solution. Yes. And yes. what I'm told by the state is to go to the feds, and the feds tell me to go to the state, and the state tells me to go to the feds. I, I just want to run my hospital. <laughs> okay. You know? <laughs> just help me fix this. You should be allowed to. <laughs> Bill, thank you very much. Very well said. Thank you. Um, and I think it, 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 it pleads to a follow-up. Sure. If we can do that, and let's see where it takes us. We'll get the county through it. And it's so... It, it, Appropriate, inappropriate, unusual, strange to have the conversation with yeah. the county and the conversation well, with the I was Carillion. with them last night. Yes and, yes, and that's and that's the other thing is we're talking about a group of people in this county mm -hmm. that provide ninety three million dollars of economic impact a year to mm -hmm. this county. Yeah, yeah. And so, do we want that tax base to erode? No, no. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you learned something. I hope you're paying attention and. Uh, I am, and I'm not exactly sure that I'm smart enough to figure it out, but I do know a direction. I do know a direction. And, you know, I'm, what do they call me now? A senior citizen. That's, that's probably the nicest Experienced thing. Experienced American. Experienced American. I like that. <laughs> um, I had, a, I had, a, I had a, something, a, a, 
a, a child that's a grandchild, uh, said, great grandpa. And it was the first time any one of that, because I have, Dee and I have six great grandchildren and 20 grandchildren. And so we, 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 to have somebody say great grand, and his mother came and said, call him great and wonderful. There you, <laughs> you go. Know? So there you go. I'm trying to look for a substitute That's and right. for you, for me, for the county. So it's, it's the way we have to do. Keep your head up, keep recognizing and moving forward. And, uh, That's right. Make sense out of it. Bill, thank you. Thank you. Bill Jacobson. Appreciate your time, Dick. I will say one thing in, con in closing. I am glad Mr. Jacobson is here in our community. He says it well. He says it right. And um, is very serious about it. And if you've been sick, you've been in the hospital, you've had need, you know what I'm talking about. So it's a good thing. We have to follow it through and figure out the answer. And I think I, I'm following what you're saying very well. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. All right. All right. We are going to stop for a moment. We're going to hear from our sponsors. And I'll be back. I'm going to interview two very nice young people here that are going to, that are going to tell you about their current job, <laughs> amongst other things. But... Uh, uh, I'll just leave that open and uh, stay where you are. We'll be back in just a few moments. Thank you.